Okay, it's the next day and we're gonna do some cardio again. So it's the morning, I had a liter of water, just drank it and uh, took a shower. And now we're gonna do some cardio once again. But we're also going to the boulevard to take some pictures for new vintage genetics tank tops, all new unique designs which will be up in the store um, maybe right now already, but I'll let you know if you follow me on Instagram at Wesley Vissers. Whenever something is released, you'll be the first to know if you follow me on Instagram. But I'll be sure to announce it everywhere regardless. So uh, the cardio in the morning is always about 4,000 steps, maybe 5,000 steps. And then uh, throughout the day, you, uh, you know, you take some steps and then at the end, we take another few steps in another cardio session to reach the 10,000 plus step count. So we're going to the boulevard now and uh, see you there. Now this finally you could see the true environment of Aruba. A lot of green, a lot of cacti, a lot of trees. So this is the road to the boulevard about five minutes and we'll be there. Eagle Beach right now. And uh, here we're going to try to take some pictures for the uh, tank tops. And we're also going to do some cardio here because why not? It's the sun, it's the sand and the sea. So it's always nice to do some cardio and so let's enjoy it. Just look at this, you guys. I could think of worse places to go to quarantine at. I won't mind staying here for 14 days. The only thing that's not so nice is that uh, you know, my family can't really come with me because of the whole situation. But look at the sea. It's blue. It's relaxing. You'll probably hear a lot of wind, but uh, this is amazing. Okay, we just walked across the boulevard, took some pictures of the new tank tops. So I'm gonna see if they are going to be usable for the website, but hopefully they are, because the background is incredible, of course. And now we're gonna walk to the supermarket because we finally need a kitchen scale. It's important to be able to gauge, well, accurately measure your carbohydrates. My fish and vegetables are pretty much the same anyway. I know what those are, but the carbs change every single day, so I wanna to the gram, weigh them, so we're gonna get a kit skill right now, so uh, let's go to the supermarket. Okay, so I'm making cream of rice right now, 80 grams, finally after cardio, and William Bonac was actually nice enough to lend me his kitchen skill because once again, we couldn't find a normal one, only ones that are like 100 euros for professionals, that's not what we need. We just need a simple one, so hopefully today, we will succeed regardless. So this is cream of rice, gonna add some 60 grams of whey isolated gladiator pro in here. Also 100 grams of blueberries and uh, some 100% dark chocolate, 15 grams. And of course the kiwi and some cinnamon here as well, some salt. I add even more salt today uh, when I'm in Aruba because you lose a lot of sodium. So especially when walking outside and the wind it's very strong, you don't notice how much you're sweating, but you are definitely sweating. So more, more water, more sodium, and uh, a bit more carbs than usual. And by the way, this morning I weighed 112.8 kilograms, so a bit more than yesterday, but it's still quite close to the weight limit, and I don't wanna drop down too quickly. So yesterday the carbs were a bit more uh, compared to right now. So right now it's 80 grams, yesterday was around 120 grams. So. Uh, I'm going to show you the end result once this is done. All right, so this is the first meal of the day. As you can see, that drill effect is because of the bacillus in husk. It creates more volume, allows me to add more water to this. This is about 700 mils of water with 80 grams of cream of rice. So that's pretty good ratios for a high volume meal. We have some raspberries, some blueberries, and the other ingredients, as I mentioned. And the chocolate really finishes, finishes this meal off. And we also, of course, have the kiwi, which with the skin on has a lot more nutrients than with the skin cut off. So let's enjoy this meal. And after this, we're going to train some chest. All right, it's time for a chest workout. And 
you're lying if you're saying that chest simply isn't the most fun muscle group to train in a different gym for the first time. Yes, I know there will be people there who train legs, who love to train legs and love to try out the equipment in a, in a different gym. I do as well. But when you're training chest, you can see your own physique transform in different ways when you are in a different gym, using different machines, getting a different pump, etc. So what we're doing today is we start out with the decline chest press. This gym called Hardcore Fitness has a lot of chest machines. And trust me, if you train chest twice a week here, it'll take you several weeks several months before you get each combination down so you never get bored of the chest machines here however i do want to make this workout just a normal workout that i would be doing back at home as well so we're starting out with a regular compound movement the decline chest press and i love the decline because it allows for a greater range of motion you can feel a way better stretch especially in the lower pecs but as you can also see when i'm contracting the pecs you can see that the upper pecs are also being worked so everybody you know most people think that the decline chest press or decline bench press or whatever press is it is decline that it only works the lower chest and minimally the upper chest but in fact literature has even shown that it works the lower chest yes more than the incline bench press but also the upper chest so you might as well think well why not just do the decline bench press instead of the incline bench press if the decline has only benefits over the incline well we are bodybuilders and we all have our preferences so when you're doing an incline it feels very different and for a lot of bodybuilders they are very strong on it and more stable on it as well allowing for ultimately greater weight to be used the decline version puts a lot of pressure on your head if you're doing it are laying back in a decline position but that's why i'm doing this decline chest press because you're simply sitting in a chair in a seat in a bench and it's really easy to use and to utilize so this is working set number two so what i like to do no matter where i'm at is i like to do some warm-up sets which are sets of about you know five to six reps Unless it's the first exercise of the day, then I like to do a couple more warm-up sets with a bit more reps like 10 and 12 and 15 rep uh, sets to warm up the muscle. But once that's done, most of the movements I'll be doing are going to be around the 5 to 6 rep mark for each warm-up set. And I'm not showing each warm-up set in this video because otherwise it would take way too long. But you get the gist of it. Just do some warm-ups, save your power for the true working sets and then you can actually do a rep or two more on the sets that matter because on those sets that's where you grow muscle on the warm-up sets you don't don't get me wrong warming up is very important i always preach it and i've actually trained for a very long time doing straight sets of 10 increasing the weight until i can't hit 10 reps anymore which were great for a lot of years especially when you're a beginner that's the almost the perfect way to work out in my opinion it allows for more volume it allows for you to get used to the movement more to learn how to utilize the muscles more and i did that for many years and you know pretty much got my pro card using that technique but once you get to a certain level you need to implement techniques that work even better and that they only work if you're very you know not very strong but if you if you're getting up there in terms of strength right now of course it's not a great example because my strength is lower in the prep like two and a half weeks out compared to the off season but still you want to be as strong as possible because that retains the most amount of muscle mass and of course i have to check out my shape in this gym natural lighting so no goon lighting in this gym just natural lighting that i like to see what i truly look like so i won't be disappointed when i look at the stage pictures and i might look even worse than in a gym pictures now i do realize i have a good pump here but i plan on getting a good pump backstage the mistake i used to make back in the day is not using any sodium days before going on stage and then at the same time drinking 
quite a lot of water uh, flushing out all the electrolytes that I had so I wouldn't be able to get a pump no matter how many carbs I loaded so that's not what we're doing and by the way this movement is the incline chest press machine also a very awesome one do keep in mind not to include the front delts too much really focus on the chest which is difficult on an incline movement but it's a different angle that we as bodybuilders love to use now this movement, I've done this for many years, but I've been inspired to do it again by William Bonac. In my last chest workout video with him, we used to do this same exercise. So just a regular chest press first, go to pretty much failure on the regular chest press uh, grip, and then go to the hammer grip and definitely go to failure on that grip. And that gives you a great pump. It's the chest from different angles, but it only really works if you do it at like the second or third exercise because then you already have a good pump. The strength has diminished a little bit because usually these machines are quite light. Here I'm using the maximum amount of weight on this machine anyway, and I'm trying to use perfect form to make it as difficult as possible. But that's good news for me because I am used to getting very weak near the end of prep when I did not implement the warm-up sets and only did straight sets all the way through the prep. That didn't work for my strength and ultimately I would lose fullness. And you can see in this clip right here when I'm doing the dips, the fullness is still definitely there. Of course, nutrition and supplementation plays a huge role in this, uh, proper hydration as well. But what plays an even bigger role is the training you do constantly uh, that uh, determines the amount of a muscle you're able to hold if we'll be doing a lot of pump sets light sets i would simply not maintain the thickness and density of the muscle that i have right now i really think that works quite amazingly for my physique as long as i keep using full range of motion mind muscle connection but with weights that are as heavy as possible and not wasting any energy on the sets before. To me, that is the best combination I can possibly use in order to grow and maintain my muscle during the prep. So this movement feels pretty awesome, I have to say. After doing all those chest movements, it's really about the stretch, but the benefit of a dip machine is that not only the stretch is there, but also the contraction. When you're doing a regular dip movement at the end of the workout, it's an amazing movement to maximize the stretch with. But if you're also looking for a nice contraction, you're pretty much stuck to doing a dip machine. And I just wanted to try it out in this gym and it felt quite amazing for sure. Normally I like to do my dips on the ATX belt squat machine with a belt attached to my waist, which allows for an even greater stretch which in some instances is even better. But if you want a great pump and a different stimulus, using the machine is definitely not a bad idea either. And this is the final chest movement. Some easy peg deck flies. Well, not easy, but simple peg deck flies. Only did two sets of this because I felt my chest was already very full, but I did not hit an isolation movement yet. So this is it. Going to failure on this one and the previous one was the warm-up set to make sure I get used to the movement and my chest is used to being isolated in this movement. So don't go too heavy. No matter how warmed up you think you are, I always recommend doing at least one warm-up set before doing your heaviest set on an exercise. Of course, after doing all the chest movements, it's time for the tricep movements. And I pretty much always like to start out with a tricep rope pushdown. It warms up the triceps, it allows for a great contraction in the triceps, a great stretch. It is an all around great exercise to warm it up and get used to feeling those triceps being burned and being, you know, stressed by a weight. Um, because in my opinion, if you start out with a heavy French press or a heavy skull crusher or a heavy overhead movement, even after having done all the chest movements, the tricep tendon and the elbow simply isn't warmed up just enough to isolate that muscle fully. So just to be safe, I like to do the tricep rope extension push down first. And uh, also here I'm implementing kind of like a warm up scheme. Uh, like uh, lower rep sets because normally I will be doing 
12 to 15 reps on each set and now it is some sets with a lower amount of reps to save energy for the very last set which actually is a set of failure which is the working set and then the intensifying technique is the drop set which i do right after so that gives you a very good pump getting blood in the triceps and the more blood is in the triceps the better the stretch will be whenever you're doing a movement like this now this is an overhead tricep extension machine and whenever you're doing an overhead movement with the triceps what you're looking for is the stretch the contraction is secondary because in most movements, most overhead movements, if you try to contract the tricep, almost all of the load is also on your elbows because it's overhead. So, you know, it's straight down on your joints. That's not really what we want. We want constant tension on the triceps. And the only way to achieve this is to stay in the stretched position and go all the way up until you feel the tension being lost in the muscle. That's when you go back down. So you can really notice here that I'm focusing on feeling that stretchy feeling, that stretchy connection in the triceps using experience and mind muscle connection. But as I mentioned to you guys, if you do a movement first that puts blood in the muscle, it's going to be easier to feel that same muscle when you're stretching it out. So it's a very good tool if you're having trouble with your mind-muscle connection in any muscle. First, make sure that you get a good pump, get blood in there on an exercise that you know that you're able to do that. And then go ahead and do an exercise like this. Because if this would be the first movement for triceps that I did, the stretch would be there, but it would not feel as severe as it does now. And the better the stretch, ultimately, the better the growth will be. And also here, we're doing a drop set. I'm using a bit more intensity in my workouts now, going, you know, just a bit more heavy on some movements, a bit more extended sets, like doing drop sets, a bit more reps here and there on the working sets just to make sure that the calories are burned not because i'm working out to burn calories but because my body my muscles are putting a demand on calories in order to maintain that muscle so that allows me to still eat quite a lot well you know compared to a lot of other competitors who might be eating below 2000 calories i might still be above 2500 calories on my lower days and that's pretty much as low as I want to go because if I look flat, if I look stringy, that's not gonna be good for my personal physique because I need to be dominant on stage. I need to be wide, I need to be full, and this time, incredibly conditioned. That's what will give the illusion of being very, very good. And at that point, it's not really an illusion anymore, it's simply the truth. If you are big, full, but most of all conditioned, then you can call yourself a good bodybuilder and that's what i'm going for and this last movement is the long french press i'm calling it the long french press because i'm not just going behind the head now the difference between the skull crusher and the french press is with the skull crusher the, uh, the barbell will be going to your forehead when you go down but this time the barbell goes behind my head and then i'm pressing it above my forehead so that's making the range of motion longer than usual, making it the long French press. The bigger the range of motion, the longer the time on attention, the better it is for muscle growth. So that was quite the awesome workout for sure. And uh, of course at the end I have to do some posing to check my shape with a good pump, some classic poses which you of course will see on the Olympia stage. I just love those poses. They fit me well and I keep improving them each and every time. So right now it's time for the post workout meal. Just look at the quality of this meal this is an amazing meal very healthy 
and restorative from a workout. So the breakfast and the post-workout meal, in my opinion, are the most important meals because the breakfast breaks your fast and that's um, also very anabolic. And post-workout, you need to recover as quickly as possible. That's why you add carbs in there. So in here, 250 grams of codfish. We have about 100 grams of cucumber. Very easy to digest, very low FODMAP, so it won't bloat you. And 80 grams of rice, probably around 250 grams of uh, cooked rice. Adding a lot of salt here as well. Himalayan pink salt to taste. Not too salty, but not bland either. And we have a kiwi, of course. And right there are all the files from the workout already, which I'll be implementing in this very video right now. Alrighty guys, next meal is up. Meal number three of the day is gonna be a small meal because it's quite late already and I still need to get three more meals after this. So the vegetables are minimized, the protein source is there, and a bit of fat source in terms of the avocado that I'm gonna use. So if you look at here, you can see the delicious protein source tuna. Uh, this is the actual can it comes out in. Contains about you know 25 to 30 grams of protein. So this is about 50 to 60 grams of protein, adding this one on top. What we also have is a special vegetable. It looks like broccoli, but it's actually beamy or broccoli asparagus. So you can see that um, there are stalks there, which were, you know, remind you of an as asparagus, but also with broccoli ends. So that's a fusion between asparagus and broccoli. It's also called beamy. So if you haven't tried that yet out, out yet, then definitely try this one because it tastes amazing. Look at this, that looks delicious, right? Now, compared to the first meal before this, this looks pretty bad, but it doesn't taste that bad, to be honest. The meat tastes great, the avocado tastes great. I put some salt and pepper with the tuna and the tuna actually doesn't taste terrible either. You can mix it up nicely with all the other stuff, things in here. So yeah, just gonna eat this meal real quick, then probably do cardio about an hour later and then have my other meal. So let's try to enjoy. Okay. The next meal is a very simple one. This is zucchini. Just cut up half a zucchini, probably about you know 125 grams of vegetables. And the other thing I'll be having is inside of here is some codfish, 250 grams already pre-cooked, but it's still frozen, so I'm thawing it in a microwave. When that's done, that is the meal. If you want to get shredded, this is the kind of meals you gotta have. Prepping for the classic physique, Olympia. So this is the end result. We have zucchini, about 125 grams. We have the codfish, 250 grams. That is delicious, gotta be honest. Well, everything is still tasting good, except the nutrients in there are way below what you're used to, especially if you add carbs and fats, which now are not added. And just a bit of ketchup. Again, the Heinz ketchup. 0% sugar, no sodium added, 46 calories per 100 grams, I'm adding about 15 grams, so that's about, you know, 5 to 6 calories added. That's what I have done on a lot of my meals throughout the prep, at least, you know, two times a day, so I continue to do so until the very end, unless I still feel like I need to lose a little bit faster. But yes, for now, let's enjoy this. So even though I've been working on the videos quite extensively, if you don't have any internet here, it's gonna be hard to upload every single day because ever since this late afternoon, I haven't had access to any internet. And of course the people at the office aren't here, so we have to wait until tomorrow, until it's fixed probably. So, you know, there will be a small delay then in the videos, but once you see this, it's already resolved. But yeah, in the meantime, people who were expecting an email the day after asking me something, they might receive it one day later. So apologies for that in advance, but this is out of my control, which I don't like. But anyway, now we're gonna do some extra cardio to finish off the steps of the day and uh, then have another meal and then probably call it a night. So let's get it done. All right, walking on the pier. 
the ocean is right there but before you can see the horizon there are two huge cruise ships or I think two maybe that's another one I don't know but those are pretty big a lot of boats so this is uh, looking very different from where we walked earlier and uh, really depends on where in Aruba you are it depends on you know how much nature you see or how many buildings you see and uh, it's pretty awesome to see those differences here you can get a better grasp of how big it is it's called the Norwegian Sun as you can see by the illustration and behind that one behind this building is another one so a lot of people are here on Aruba right now as an extra bonus for the country these are some of the very interesting buildings in Aruba as you can see very interesting designs and all kinds of different stores mostly jewelry and fashion and stuff like that but it's still amazing to see a lot of different architecture in uh, one of the busiest places in Aruba that's Queen Wilhelmina and I think she was the mother of Queen Juliana and Queen Juliana is the mother of Queen Beatrix and Beatrix is the mother of King Willem Alexander who is right now the king of the Netherlands so that's a lineage of royalty right there all right this next meal is some salmon and again just some vegetables some asparagus tiny bit of ketchup but there's the salmon that's the main uh, goal of this meal getting that in because that's healthy fats and healthy protein about 250 grams of salmon fillet they're very delicious very incredible and finally we have some internet back so i can get back to work all right guys thank you very much for watching this video a lot more is coming and i'm actually going to do a q a which is a long overdue i already have enough questions but that's the video that you can expect for next time but a lot of other videos are coming as well such as the daily vlogs like this one so let me know if you enjoy them and let me know if you want to see any other things while i'm out here in aruba because you know the entire day is here for me to show to you and of course a workout will always be included but if you want to see anything else let me know and don't forget to stay golden